Hey guys, Muncie here, and I usually don't make these kind of videos. I make uh, I make coin rings. I got into this uh, as a hobby. I've made a little bit of money at it, but not much. But uh, this is my first uh, video that I've ever done about making coin rings, and I'm doing that for a shout out Stevie TV. Um, if you haven't seen or didn't know, he did an interview. Um, with me on off topic and uh, when we were talking offline uh, one thing that we were talking about and it came up that uh, that he needed a new wedding band and so uh, I told him you know I was talking to him about making these coin rings and so um, that's what I'm gonna do I'm going to make him a coin ring for his uh, wedding band and what we're gonna use for that is we're going to use a quarter so this is a US silver quarter it's from a proof set you can see on the back I'll show a better picture of it in a minute but uh, there you go it is a Colorado State hood quarter Stevie this is going to be for you hope you enjoy it 2018 Indian Chief Alright guys, I'm going to get started. First of all, this is a coin ring. So we're going to turn this into this. So that's our goal. So the process of making a flat coin into a ring, the first thing you have to do is you have to punch a hole in the center of it. Um, so what I use, uh, what I'm going to use for this particular ring, um, I'm going to I'm going to use a, a punch, a three eighths inch punch to put the hole in it. Um, that's about as small as I usually do. I can go a little smaller, but you know, those are for like dimes or pennies. I really don't like to go smaller. <gasps> That's what she said. Um, but the reason you do that is you get to keep more of the detail in the coin. Uh, so uh, the larger the hole that you punch, the less detail you have. So you'll lose detail. Um, so you punch that smaller hole, you'll get to keep a keep more detail, which also means you have a wider band. So if you punch a bigger hole, your band's going to be a lot thinner. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So what I do is we have a spacer here. What that does, the purpose is it keeps the coin centered. Now there's always, not always, but often there's a little bit of play in between the coins. There's not much here, but that little bit can have a, a big difference when you're centering the coin and punching the hole for later. So I just use a piece of shop towel, kind of fills up that gap. Their hole. The next thing I do is uh, I deburr it. I, if you don't know what I mean by deburring, basically all you do is you're going to um, you're going to scrape out the edges. This sharp because now there's a little sharp edge in here. Now what you do, two reasons to do that: a, it takes the sharp edge off, but b, the big thing is you can form like micro um, scopic tears in the coin when you're doing that, and those small tears will become big big tears. It can actually split the coin as you're going through the stretching process. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to kneel this. And the kneeling process is, if you don't know what, what that means, is we're just going to heat the coin up. And we're going to heat it up 
to a point that it makes it easier to move. By move, I mean to bend and to shape this. Um, one of the things to do is normally without with the light on, I'll just put these Sharpie marks on here. And as they start to fade off, I know that's about where I want to be on the kneeling process. But, but what's neat is the coin, the flame will start to change colors and the coin will heat up again, of course, and kind of take on a different color. And you can see that better when you turn the lights off. So let's just go take a few seconds or a minute to get this heated up. Now you can't really anneal too often, but you can anneal too long. If you anneal too long, you actually deform the the silver. It'll start kind of popping up and this looks bad. Alright, so as you can see, it actually started to change colors a little bit. Um, gives it a kind of a gold tint to it. Um, that just happens in the annealing process. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually start to to fold the, the coin. It's going to fold it down on itself. Um, in order to make that ring shape. See what we did is we just used these folding cones and just started to fold it down on itself. So that's uh that's where we're starting at to actually start to get that ring look. So we're just going to do another little fold just a little bit, open that bottom up, bottom hole up, just because you have to have a, you have to have a, the diameter a certain size before it'll actually go onto our ring stretcher here. And what I'm going to do is before before I start stretching, I'm going to go ahead and kneel it. I'm going to kneel one more time. All right, we'll go ahead and get ready to start stretching. Stretch it out. Stretch it. We want to keep as much detail as we can. Oh, uh, to begin with, I had to stretch just a little bit out so that I can get the ring over the spindle, the spines here. Now when you size a, a coin ring, what you're doing is you're sizing to the reeded side. The reeded side is the side of the coin has all that those little ridges, which are actually a counterfeiting measure on coins. But uh, so when you size a ring, coin ring, 
you're sizing to, to that side. So the next step we're going to do is we've already um, made it and we've got it a little larger. I want to go at least one size larger and he's one at eight and a half. We're right at a nine. So what I am going to do is give this just a little bit of a stretch. Upside down. this to size. Colorado. There it is, Stevie. Stevie TV. Are you looking for it in the mail? Hope you enjoy it. Thanks.